Hello and welcome to video 21. In this problem we're again going to use conservation of energy or the work energy theorem meaning that the total mechanical energy initially has to be equal to the total mechanical energy final unless there's some sort of outside force that does non-conservative work. What I mean by non-conservative work is work that changes the overall energy of the system, meaning a force that changes the energy and it doesn't go into potential energy. The only kinds of potential energy we're going to be concerning ourselves with is potential energy due to gravity and potential energy due to a spring. In this case, we have both of those things going on. So we have one block here, a bigger block, which I'll call capital M for the mass, and a smaller block, which I'll call lower M for the mass. And it starts off with this mass in a rest position. This is its relaxed length. When I let this mass go, what's going to happen is this spring is going to stretch some amount, some distance x. Because this is connected by a string over a pulley, this mass is going to lower by that same distance x. Now in looking at the total mechanical energy, the total mechanical energy in the beginning is going to be simply the potential energy gravitational for here. Because the spring is not stretched at all or compressed for that matter, there's no potential energy stored in the spring. We're not going to concern ourselves with the gravitational potential energy of m or big M, because in the course of the problem it doesn't go up and it doesn't go down, so that energy is not going to change. We really only care about changes in potential energy. This mass, however, will. Something else we're going to do to make our lives a little bit easier is we're going to assume that at the lowest point in the system, this potential energy is going to be zero joules. Now, we don't know what the x is, but we know that this mass has some potential energy that is going to be little m g x. So when we're looking at the total mechanical energy initially, the total mechanical energy in the beginning is going to be simply m g x. Then we let this go and it will accelerate and then gradually slow down as the spring extends and a force starts to pull it back, at some point this block is going to stop. At that point the kinetic energy is zero. So when we look at the total mechanical energy in the beginning, wasn't moving, so the kinetic energy was zero. At the end, it wasn't moving, so the kinetic energy is zero. We're not going to concern ourselves for this particular problem with the kinetic energy before after because it's the same, and not only was it the same, we know it was zero in both cases. But in the beginning, the entire energy of the system is stored in this block, little m, and has a potential energy of mgx. There is no work non-conservative here. There's no uh, friction taking energy away. There's no giant ogre or Shrek coming in, knocking blocks around. You simply have gravity pulling it down and the spring extending. So we're only dealing with gravitational potential and spring potential energy here. So in the beginning, the total energy of the system is mgx. And at the end, all of that energy gets stored in this spring, which is going to be 1 half kx squared. This will have no gravitational potential energy. So this is the equation that shows that the energy after is the same as the energy before. Now what the question is ultimately asking for is what position is this going to happen at? What is this distance x? So we just have to solve this for x. This x squared, or the squared part cancels out with the x. We're going to solve for x, bring the 2 over, you get 2mg divide by k, and you get that this distance is equal to 2mg over k. It makes sense that this distance would get bigger if you hung a heavier mass, little m. It also makes sense that this distance would get bigger if you had a smaller k or a weaker spring. When we plug in the actual numbers, uh, you're going to get 2 times the mass is 1 kilogram times the acceleration due to gravity 9.8 meters per second squared over the spring constant which is 25 newtons per meter and we put that into our we're going to get a value 
of 0 0.784 meters or 78.4 centimeters. That's how far it goes. Now when I give this kind of problem to students, they often ask me, well, what about the big M? I don't see that anywhere in the solution. And you're right, you don't. The reason it doesn't matter in this particular problem, the answer would be exactly the same as if this string was directly connected to the spring, is that this mass does not change potential energy, so there's no MGH term from it, and it doesn't have any kinetic energy in the beginning or the end. A little more complicated version of this problem would have the mass moving to begin with or stopping or I should say ending the problem where it's still in motion. Then we do have to account for this M because that involves the kinetic energy. But here, uh, that mass isn't in the potential energy because the potential energy stays the same. It isn't in the kinetic energy because the kinetic energy stays the same. So for this time around, it doesn't affect it. Uh, but again, when you're doing these problems, I don't want you to look at it and memorize, oh, x equals 2mg over k. That's the equation for mass hung over a frictionless pulley connected to a big mass on a frictionless table to a spring, that's a little crazy. As I like to tell my students, it's a slippery slope, it's a dark, deep rabbit hole that you don't want to get into memorizing every possible permutation. Rather, what you want to do is you want to practice problems like this where you say the total mechanical energy in the beginning plus any work non-conservative done equals the total mechanical energy final. Some problems have spring potential energy, some don't. Some have gravitational potential energy, some don't. Some you have to do this for more than one object. You might have this going up or down and have to account for that potential energy. Here we didn't. So this is a good starting point. It's a good problem to look at. But you also want to look at some more complex ones where maybe this mass gets higher or lower. Or maybe there's a second spring. But other levels. So rather than memorize this formula, dangerous, you want to practice applying this. So as always, I hope that you found this helpful, and we'll see you next time.